James Buchanan once said, a century ago, petroleum, as we call oil, was just an obscure commodity. Today, it is almost as vital to human existence as water. Keep this in mind as we discuss today the possibility of Saudi Arabia joining the BRICS and what it means for the global energy and economy. Hello everyone and welcome to Geopolitics in Conflict show. My name is Dr. David Wallalu. Let me ask you a question. What will be the global energy and economic impact when Saudi Arabia joins BRICS? For over a decade, I was an international security analyst in Washington, D.C. I saw a lot of changes taking place, and I gave high-ranking military officers my analytic prediction on what was coming. What's happening now was something that I could see coming so much so that I wrote a book about Saudi Arabia disclosing the possibility of Saudis joining forces with China. And with President Xi going to Saudi Arabia at the Saudis' invitation, looking at this issue is not limited only to Saudi Arabia or BRICS or China. Rather, it has massive global implication on the energy and economic domains. Is this a step towards the end of the petrodollar? I find it very interesting as to the timing of the announcement, given the geopolitical tensions ranging from the Ukraine crisis and global inflation to Taiwan and global food insecurity. Yet, as a geopolitical analyst, I argue that whether that announcement by the Saudis is a strategic geopolitical pressure attempt or truly a genuine possibility that looms as likely. And if I learned one thing throughout the years is that in international relations, context matters. Because here is the thing that you need to know. If the Saudis are admitted to the BRICS, which I foresee they will, then the tectonic plates of international trade, banking, and economics are about to shift under the U.S. feet. Why is that important, you may ask? The short answer is no more petrodollars. Surprisingly, the security and economic focused blocks led by Beijing and Moscow are looking to take on new members of their own, including Argentina, Iran, Saudi Arabia. But for the last two, Iran and Saudi Arabia, the two most influential Middle Eastern rivals whose interest in shoring up cooperation on this new front could have and will have a significant impact on the global geopolitical balance of power. In the case of Saudi Arabia, joining the BRICS allows it, along with Russia, two major oil producers to truly influence prices on the global market. Similarly, joining the BRICS, Saudi Arabia will be able to sell oil to two major consuming markets, India and China, with almost 30% of the world population. Let that sink in for a moment. There are two major blocks that I'd like you to know about. What the two blocks are, one is the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, known as SCO, and the other one is BRICS. The former was established in 2001, six-member political, economic, and military coalition that includes China, Russia, and the Central Asian states of Kazakhstan, Greekistan, and Tajikistan. Before recruiting Southeast Asian nemesis, India and Pakistan in 2017. The latter one is a grouping of emerging economic powers, originally consisting of Brazil, 
Russia, India and China upon its inception in 2006 and later including South Africa in 2010. So here's the thing. China's invitation to Saudi Arabia to join the BRICS suggests the role Saudi Arabia can play in shaping the trajectory for the new global order, at least from an energy, trade and economic perspective. And the hard truth is this. When Saudi Arabia joined BRICS, that would, that would essentially be the end of the petrodollar and, in, and is even more consequential in terms of the end of the U.S. ability to use the weight of the international trade currency to manipulate foreign governments, for example. The global economic system will have an alternative. The fracturing of the world created and an outcome of energy development would be guaranteed. And with the current announcements of Russia and China creating a new currency, it looks to me as an analyst that the BRICS is moving towards with the intent is moving forward rather with the intent to create an alternative option for the global south and other countries an alternative to the current western trade and financial platforms like the swift which is operated on the use of the us dollar as a currency I believe the world could benefit from having two financial systems or me mechanisms, if you will, to use depending on each country's need. And because of the concern of the US, in early June, the Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell stated, and I quote, rapid changes are taking place in the global monetary system that may affect the international role of the US dollar. The logical next question will be, or is, did the Ukraine conflict, for example, prove why BRICS can be more influential than ever? It became clear to me that the 2022 punitive economic and financial sanctions by Western nations alliance from Washington and Brussels against Russia was exactly the reason why BRICS assembled in the first place. So here's my conclusion before I will leave you with today's question. The BRICS team, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and especially if Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Argentina are added which will create what we call BRICS Plus. It will indeed be a counterbalance to the control of Western trade and finance. This global cleaving, if I may be blunt about it and use the term, is moving from a possibility to a likelihood. If Saudi Arabia, it's not if, but when Saudi Arabia joined BRICS, that fracture will become almost certain. Here is today's question for you. Will the United States go to war to protect the US dollar when Saudi Arabia joined BRICS? I repeat, will the United States go to war to protect the US dollar if Saudi Arabia joined BRICS? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. As always, Prepare yourself for the changing global order. Till next time. Bye-bye.